Hi everyone, it's Miki and welcome to Chupacabra Outdoor. Today I'd like to talk with you guys and spend some words about what I believe are the main differences between an airsoft and milsim or even reenactment game, at least where I live here in Italy. I'm aware it might feel like a fine line to those not familiar with both types of game, but there is a line and plenty of misconceptions about it. How do I know this stuff? Well, I've been involved in the airsoft community for quite a long time. I started playing real young and about 4 to 5 years ago me and some of my closest friends decided to found our own team, called Reapers Soft Air. Yes, in Italy we actually call it Soft Air and not Airsoft. Well, about one year ago the team ceased to exist, for different reasons, and I decided to join one of the largest milsim and reenactment community in northern Italy, the 5th Delta. I met some of these guys during an expo in which they were hosting a CQB beginners class. They also had awesome equipment and they really looked like genuine guys, which they absolutely are. On this team I found players with incredible military knowledge which knew everything about loadouts, gears, weapons and equipments used by soldiers deployed all around the world, and they were equipped as well with very detailed and realistic kits defined not only by the type of unit they resembles, but by a specific timeline reference as well. Already interested in this kind of stuff, the transition for me was actually quite smooth, and I immediately got carried away with this new approach to Airsoft. But this wasn't it, they played a vastly different game, more complex and detailed, with a military simulation feel rather than a skirmish with BB guns. So these are what I believe to be the main differences between Airsoft and Milsim. Once you step foot in a Milsim game, you'll immediately feel the difference. Teams are required to move in a certain way or formation. They receive orders from a team leader and, in plenty of cases, each player has its own role. Team leader, medic, assaulter, marksman or DMR and support being the most common ones. Another major difference in our Milsim games are wounded and how to treat them. Each Milsim circuit might tweak a bit the rules for this aspect. The way we do it is with a 3 wounds system. First hit gets you a leg wound, that can be cured from any team member who has a bandage. Usually it's 1 for each player and 5 for the medic. Once sealed you can't run or jump anymore. Second hit, it's an end wound, you lose one end and need immediate care only from the team medic. Third and last is an eye wound, a very bad situation. Even if the medic heals in one more time, you are now not useful at all and severely slowing down the whole team. In a milsim game, you don't leave your wounded teammates behind, you just don't, unless it's an extremely critical situation. This vastly improves game dynamics and realism. Each player needs to take care not just of himself but of the whole team, covering each other moving in a smart and collective way. If there are too many wounded or the medic gets it leaving the squad stuck, after a certain time you get to move back to the HQ, which is probably very far away and restart after a brief pause. You can see then how much different are the dynamics compared to regular airsoft skirmishes which are certainly more playful and fun overall. These scenarios are usually more intuitive and easy, such as Capture the Flag, King of the Hill or the Evergreen Deathmatch. Players are even allowed to go out on themselves and try to get a kill streak on their own, which is what I was used to do as well all the time, and that was hard for me to avoid when I got on the Milsim side, and still is to this day. Last major difference is magazine capacity and modes of fire. Our milsims do not allow iCap magazines, unless for the support role, which is supposed to carry a light machine gun anyways. Low or mid caps are the standard, that means much more mags to carry and reloading time. These make players fire much more single shots as well, otherwise it's unavoidable to run out of BBs very soon. Most of the times you can reload your mags just in a specific area, that means you must save your shots and fire just when necessary. 
game planning is also different. While they're pretty basic in most cases, some airsoft games and events are very well developed, fun and entertaining, but they usually transcend military or political references. While we tend to base our games or missions on such backgrounds and scenarios. In Terror Retrieval, establishing landing zones, hostage rescue and building clearance are the most common. And for big events, there's always a geopolitical context in which we are fictitiously involved. That's just for the sake of immersion, and I'm aware such backgrounds are not necessarily what a Milsim game should or should not have. Most Milsims are just based off practical differences such as the ones I previously mentioned. While this differs widely, when Milsim meets reenactment, for sure the most noticeable difference is the gear. Airsoft lets you play with basically everything you want. Mesh masks, any kind of airsoft gun, with any kind of accessories. L, you could easily play with a stubby rifle with a same length scope and a 4000 BBs electric mag. This does not happen in a Milsim game. Gears and weapons are much more realistic, resembling what a real military operator would actually use. Reenactment guys takes it even further, with 100% or close, same gears and equipment of a real military operator. That might be real stuff or repros, depending on the choice of the individual reenactor. It's even common to see real ballistic plates, Kevlar helmets and military NVGs in this kind of environment. Well, I hope you guys liked this video, and let me know in the comments below how do you guys play and what are the game differences where you guys play at. Thanks a lot for watching and as always, stay safe out there!